You know you're not obligated to be polite until we're actually inside my grandparents' house. Good. Then I'm gonna use this brief moment in time to make some disgusting noises with my armpits. Oh, would you? So, this is going to be quick and painless. Believe me, my grandparents like you better than they like Ronald Reagan. Wow, high praise. What are those? Hostess gifts? Never a bad idea to bring hostess gifts. Well played, Huntsberger. So what about your mom? Is she gonna be cool? Of course she'll be cool. She's the essence of cool. Cool's her street name. She's got it monogrammed on her towels and everything. Well, if she's got it monogrammed on her towels, there's nothing to worry about. What'd you bring, anyway? Cigars for Richard, chocolates for Emily, and Mrs. Eleanor Schubick's silver lighter. Huh? What's that for? Rory Logan, welcome. Come in, come in. Hi, Grandma. Hello. And our guest of honor. L'invité d'honneur. How are you, Richard? Emily? Wonderful now. Yes, wonderful. Oh, oh look uh, at you two. You're just perfect. Aren't they perfect, uh, Richard? Perfect. We're not perfect. <laughs> Nonsense, you're perfect. No, she's right. I've got split ends like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> and a sense of humor. Emily, these are for you. A small token of my gratitude. Wunderschön chocolates. I absolutely adore these. I picked them up last time I was in Switzerland. Well, aren't you clever? And here's a little something for you, sir. Oh, Romeo and Juliet. You are a good man, Logan Huntsberger. <laughs> Come, let's all go in the living room, shall we? <laughs> I just adore this jacket you're wearing. Isn't this a fine jacket, Richard? Oh, I like how the lapels are cut. Are those nice lapels, Rory? Uh, true, Grandpa. His lapels look great. Now, most modern tailors cut lapels too low. It's so sloppy having one's lapels hang down around the chest like a basset hound's ears or something. But those are excellent. No, they really are. Hi, Mom. Hey, how am I sitting? Great. Um, Mom, you remember... Logan, this is Rory's mother, Lorelai. Lorelai, this is Logan Huntsberger. Yes, we've met, actually. Nice to see you again, Logan. Nice to see you. <laughs> Come on, sit, sit, sit. Let's get drink orders. Mm -hmm. Logan, what would you like? McKellen Neat, if you have it. Oh, I adore a man who drinks his scotch neat. That is a fine drink indeed. Rory? Just club soda. So demure. Isn't she demure? The demurest. One club soda. And your usual Lorelei, a sidecar? Sidecar? No. Isn't that your drink? No, my drink is a martini. It's always been a martini. Really? Yes, pretty much every one of the other 8,000 times I've had a drink here, it's been a martini. I would have sworn you were a sidecar girl. Not even sure what's in a sidecar, Mom. Well, Richard, apparently Lorelei would like a martini. Can do. I just can't get over those lapels. Grandma and Grandpa are very taken with Logan's lapels. They look fine to me. You'll have to excuse Lorelei Logan. It takes a certain eye to be aware of this kind of thing. One scotch neat and a club soda. Thank you. Thanks, Grandpa. And one martini. That's with a twist, Lorelei? Nope, an olive in a vodka martini. Not vodka, Mom. Gin. <laughs> it's always been gin, gin martini. Really? Yes, always. I don't remember that at all. Uh, so, Logan, where exactly do you live at Yale? Are you in Rory's building? No, I'm at Berkeley. Is that far from Rory? No, I'd say it's about 90 crow pogs or so. Oh, crow pogs. Did someone say crow pogs? <laughs> crow pogs. <laughs> now that is clever. <laughs> uh, fill me in here. What's a crow pog? Years ago, someone at Yale started measuring things based on the height of a kid named crow pog. Can't believe that today's Eli's are still using crow pogs. Now, that is really something. Maxwell T. Crow pog was his name, class of 44. Oh, Laurel, I'm sorry. I forgot your drink. I made it and everything. Well, you remembered now. No, but you stay. I'll get it. I'm glad to hear that crow pog is still part of the Yale vernacular. Tradition is so important. Why don't we talk about something other than Yale? Nonsense. There's nothing better to talk about than Yale, because Yale men are the greatest. I dated a few Princeton men and a Harvard man back in my day, and they had nothing on Yale men. They better not. Here you go, Lorelei. Mom, there's an onion in here. Is that not what you wanted? Olive. I said olive. Well, I heard onion. And I said olive. Let me get you an olive. 